Everything here is booked. There's nothing to Chicago? There's nothing to Chicago, New York, Nashville, you name it. Everything's gone. What about a private plane? A private plane from Paris to Chicago would be out of the budget for, well, almost everyone. But Kate McAllister and Home Alone seemed ready and willing to bear the cost to try to get home to see Kevin, her son, of course. Fans of the Christmas classic Home Alone have wondered, just how much money did the McAllisters actually have? Well, you're lucky. The New York Times crunched the numbers with economists and they got some answers. And of course, Phil is at the magic wall to break it all down. Not poor. Not poor, no. And let's be honest, this is the most pressing question of the holiday season. I don't think there's any question about it. Just how much money did the McAllister family have? This, folks, is why great reporting matters. And this is with a huge hat tip to the New York Times for a really great story. Let's start, though, with the family home. The McAllisters lived in a wealthy Chicago suburb, a home that even by 1990 standard would have only been affordable by Chicago's 1%. Zillow's current estimated uh, value for this property, an eye-popping $2.4 million, which, as the Times points out, is probably the best clue to the family's net worth, which brings two words to mind, silver tuna. And that's the one, Marvin, that's the silver tuna. Oh, it's very G. Very G, huh? It's loaded. It's got lots of top flight goods, stereos, VCRs, toys. Probably looking at some very fine jewelry, possible cash hoard, odd marketable securities. Who knows? So the Times asked economists at Chicago's Federal Reserve, how much would the McAllisters have to be earning to actually live in a home like that? And that's where we get the answer, their answer, working under the assumption the family spent no more than the recommended 30% of their income on housing, they'd have to bring in roughly $300,000 in 1990, or close to $700,000 in 2022. And in today's market, they would actually have to be making more than that to be able to afford that home. But obviously, there's a critical question here. Where did the money actually come from? Time to dig in, right? Simple answer, we don't actually know. The movie never actually explains, but fans have theories, one clue. They often point to there are multiple mannequins scattered throughout the house. That seems rare, you would think, which has led some to believe that Kevin's mom could have been a fashion designer. That's a career they went with in the official novelization of the movie. So we think we put a check mark by that. The Times spoke to the novel's author, who says he also made Kevin's dad a businessman because it was, quote, a safe bet. What about the uncles, one of whom, Uncle Frank, travels with the family to Paris? Not exactly a beacon of generosity. Pizza's here! There you go. That's $122.50. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. my brother's house. He'll take care of it. Then, of course, there's Uncle Rob. He pays for the whole family, 15 of them, to fly to Paris to spend the holiday with his family, including four first-class tickets for his brothers and their wives, opening up his apartment. Of course, it has Eiffel Tower views to host them all. This, while maintaining, as we learn in the sequel, the Upper West Side brownstone that Kevin ends up visiting in Home Alone 2. One other theory that has made the rounds online, organized crime. Now, let's be clear here. This is speculation. We don't know this specifically, but they, fans say McAllister's home might have been targeted specifically as a mob vendetta. They point to Kevin's violence as evidence to get a childhood exposed to criminal activity. It's important to know. The Times was not able to rule out this theory. Neither have my sources. We're going to continue to press for those answers public service journalism. In the meantime, one player directly involved in this process did go on the record with a very important point. Quote, to me, with respect to the fans who argue about the parents' income or house cost, should instead simply enjoy the movie. That was from Eve Cauley, the set director for the movie. Pretty good advice, I'd say. Oh, my God. Bobby? That is everything for me this Christmas. <laughs> my passion project. <laughs> What's better, Home Alone 1, 2? There's a 4, apparently. I haven't gotten that far. Yeah, we watched Home Alone 2 last night with my kids. Yeah. Uh, they like the New York connection now that they hang yes. out in New York sometimes. But Home Alone yes. 1, it's a classic now. Yes. It's well, classic. Luca, my 5-year-old, builds booby traps all over our house that I may or may not trip on all yeah. the time. So thanks to this that's movie. Just, that's just a great kid. Yeah, great kid. Thanks, Bill. The song, The Twelve Days of Christmas, a holiday staple, of course. On the fourth day of Christmas, my true love sent to me four calling birds, three French hens, two turtle doves, and, and a partridge in a pear tree. 
Of course, the partridge in a pear tree. Have you ever stopped to think what all those gifts would look like under your tree? Five golden rings, seven swans, a swimming, ten lords a leaping. It all has to be pretty expensive. Andy Bernard from the office learned that the hard way. Whoever is giving me the 12 days of Christmas as my secret Santa, please stop. I can't take it anymore. What psycho would send that as a gift? I begged Dwight and Jim to give me Aaron for Secret Santa, and I decided to give Aaron the 12 days of Christmas. Is it my fault that the first eight days is basically 30 birds? That's some good producing there. <laughs> Richard Quest has the numbers on how much this would all cost. Richard, this may be my favorite conversation with you of the year, so take it away. Three coin, two turtle doves, and a partridge in a pear tree. How much would all this lot cost? Well, you've got to work it out. Five gold rings. They basically haven't changed in price. The three big ones, turtle doves, which are up 25% because of the rarity of turtle doves. Number two, partridge in a pear tree. That's up 14%. Why? The partridge has to live in a pear tree. The rent on the pear tree, up 14%. And the third most expensive, the geese lay. Six geese laying, five gold rings. Those six geese are laying up eight percent because they're rare. You cannot get your hands on geese at the moment. Put it all together. If you buy the twelve days of Christmas, six geese come all together. Five gold rings. Put it all together. Forty-six thousand seven hundred and thirty dollars, at two point seven percent. PNC Bank have been doing this for forty plus years. Richard, I know you want us to sing the five golden rings. Golden rings, Phil. I, I mean, do not I leave me no, hanging I'm so, here. I'm so intimidated by Richard's talent, uh, and I'm also very sure Richard could get a hand, a hold of those geese if he wanted to. Like that's his, that's his. Like he could. Right. Well, so yeah, go ahead. The Richard. number one question. Yeah. Yes. Remember, you have to buy the items again and again. Five gold <laughs> rings. You have to buy them again and again and again. So the total cost of Christmas: 346 gifts, 201,970. That's a gain of two and a half percent. Come on, stand by. You can do this. Eight made a left with seven and seven. Together. There we go. There it is. There it is. Okay. He won't do it. He won't do it. Rich request. You are my favorite. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. Happy Christmas. With all Happy Christmas, birds. as they say over the pond. You may have some geese. In your office for Christmas. Why? Because I didn't Be sing. careful when you open the door. Okay. Noted. <laughs>